if you're on the lookout for some relatively inexpensive night vision binoculars that will actually work, unlike the as seen on TV types of devices that I've taken a look at in the past, then stick around because in this video I'm going to be unboxing and giving you my first thoughts and impression on these digital night vision binoculars from Wild Game Plus and I'm going to start right now. Hello and welcome to Best Monocular Reviews. My name is Jason. And as I mentioned in the brief introduction, in this video, I'm going to be unboxing for the very first time these digital night vision binoculars. But before I begin, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a backstory as to the reasons why and you know, some other information. So with the popularity of the BBR website and the growth of this YouTube channel, many thanks to you guys for that, I've been receiving more and more requests from uh, the Amazon only uh, Alibaba type of um, brand or retailer, I don't quite know what to call them, you know, mostly from Asia, um, approaching me and asking me whether I would be interested in testing out and making a video of their product um, on my channel. Now, for the most part, I tend to um, decline the offer um, because um, the main reasons for this is because I kind of feel that whilst I have you know, no problems with um, testing out, which are mostly low cost products um, on the site, the main f issue I have is the fact that they, they kind of like feel like it's going to be a brand that's here today and gone tomorrow. So again, there's no intrinsic problem with this, except for the fact I feel as a customer, if, if you buy into a product or a, or a name or something like that, you want to feel confident that should something go wrong, you have some sort of guarantee. So even if a product, um, I'm not going to put any name or to, to any of these things, but if a brand um, sells you a product, uh, you know, as whatever level it is, if it's it's good or bad, if, if a problem does arise, you want to have some sort of um, person that you can go to or a company that you can go to um, with some sort of guarantee that means something. So if, if a brand, for instance, offers you a lifetime guarantee, it's no good if that actual brand isn't there for a lifetime or even a year. So for the, that's, for, I think, the main reason why I tend to de decline these offers. However, I look at each case individually and I do make exceptions. And in this case, this is the exception. And there are a number of reasons why I have decided to, to fully test and review what is an essentially a quite a cheap night vision device. And But the main reason is, um, some time back I um, got quite into, uh, I got quite angry I think, in the fact that I had a, a a reader on my website approached me with um, wanting to find out some more information in regards to some night vision binoculars um, that they had seen on TV um, that cost less than forty dollars, and yet the um, you know the marketing claimed that you know they were every bit as good as the ultimate night vision binocular that you know the military uses. Now. You know, the fact that the military spends many, many thousands and thousands of dollars um, buying the best night vision devices that you, you know, we can't buy, um, you know, it was just farcical. And so I got so angry in the fact that I actually ended up making an article and, and a video, actually, and I'll, I'll link to it somewhere um, up above or down below in the description, um, because the marketing was, was so... Um, false that I, I, I cannot be, I couldn't believe that it should be allowed to claim that you can see you know and, and the, the images that they the examples that they gave were obviously not taken um, at nighttime for a start they just put a green filter in front of it and but anyway I'm just digressing so but in that article my problem was um, I wanted to suggest alternatives to people who are on a tight budget but looking for a night vision device that will actually work so um, at the time, most of the devices that I've tested, um, you know, tend to be in the mid to high end level category. So, you know, you're going to, in my experience, at, spend at least three, four hundred dollars um, if you want reasonably good night vision, um, you know, and many thousands if you want extremely good night vision. So um, whilst three hundred dollars is not, you know, relatively speaking, a huge amount of money, it's also not cheap. So. When uh, Wild Game Plus approached me, I was at first really skeptical, but then I took a look. They have a website, which is a good start. And then also, you know, from the information that I've been able to find, um, these retail for around, I think about $250. Again, I'll put an exact amount. I can't remember offhand now, um, but it's inexpensive. 
knowing yeah the forty dollars mark that um, from the as seen on TV device, but you know those don't work. Now. Full disclaimer, I don't know if this works because I haven't actually opened the box yet and I haven't tested them, but I have a, a suspicion they will do. So, but the thing is, uh, my interest was peaked. It's not that expensive. I mean, it's something that we could save up to most people and afford to buy. But at the same time, um, how well do they work? I mean, I don't know. So I did want to try them. I do want to try them for myself and see just how, you know, how what you get for around $250. So that's the reason they... I, I agreed, and that's the reason they're here on my desk. So I hope you enjoy this unboxing, but uh, full disclaimer here, I, this is a true first time unboxing video. I haven't seen what's inside. I don't know um, how well they work. I don't even know if they work. I'm assuming they do. Um, I, will talk, I will speak as if they do, but please in the future, um, obviously I um, take a look at, I will be posting a follow-up video and a full review of the product. So, uh, and I will give my complete and honest uh, appraisal of how they work. So this one is an unboxing, but I, I obviously can't, um, I, we can talk about the quality of the, the feel of them and, and things like that, but I can't talk about the image. You will have to wait for that. And if you come across this video, obviously in the future, I will actually put links to the full review, etc., down below. So sorry for the extremely long in introduction there, but I, th I thought it was kind of worth it just to give you a, a sort of background and, and just, just kind of disclaimer in a way, I guess, I don't know. But without further ado, let's get on with the unboxing. Right, so welcome to this side of the table and our first good look at the box. Now, before we actually open it up, I just wanted to have a, a quick talk about the actual packaging itself. You know, quite often that I see when I get a, a cheap binocular, especially, um, is the fact that the the packaging that it comes in is generally super generic, and that they'll use the same box for you know a wide variety of products. Um, you know, and different um, different brands will use the actual same box. But with in this case, you can see that uh, Wild Game Plus have um, printed their own box, have their own box, um, and the actual, even the, the actual product um, has its own specific box. Now, I know this is something that's really small, but it is, um, you know, something that's nice to see. So on the side here, they tell us that we can see up to 10 times magnification in darkness. Now, that's um, interesting because uh, in general, uh, night vision devices tend to have a lot lower magnification than what you'd be used to with a daytime um, binocular. In the fact that there's so much less information at night time, um, it being one of the reasons that to magnify it by too much uh, just means that you 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 end up uh, reducing your exit pupil by too much and you can't actually, you know, you wouldn't be able to see anything. So in general, night vision devices tend to, you know, have a maximum of up to about three times. Now, the fact that this is a digital night vision device does change that a little. And I'm assuming the optical magnification is probably around two or three times. And then that gets magnified um, digitally um, up to 10 times. Um, they say they got an infrared illuminator. Again, this is interesting and good in that it means that um, at, in the nighttime you uh, need a, a device or something um, where it's in complete darkness. Um, so it, auto, auto, it basically acts like a torch. So it sends out infrared light that reflects off, the, off whatever you're looking at it, comes back to the device and it can make an image from that. Now this is important because um, quite a lot I, I kind of expected or, or thought that to save money they might not forego having an IR um, illuminator. So it's good to see that it's included um, within this instrument. They say that you can see viewing in the dark up to 300 meters, that's that's far. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see once I've tested it whether that indeed is the case. I mean, yes, you may be able to see 300 meters into the distance. It just depends what you can see, you know. I, you know, I can see the moon. Um, <laughs> and, and indeed I can see galaxies far away. It it's, depends on how much detail you want at that sort of distance. So it's all, you know, you always got to read these things with, I, I'm always skeptical, right? So it just depends on how much detail you expect to see at a certain distance, you know. Quite often I get asked, you know, uh, binocular related question, how far can I see with these binoculars? Well, as I said, I can see galaxies, just depends, you know, what you want to see on the galaxy. Um, high resolution image, and easily transfer files to a computer. Now, this is also another interesting thing in the fact that when they first contacted me, I was expecting um, in, to save money. What they would have done is to um, forego the recording capabilities of a digital um, device. Now, that's one of the advantages that a digital night vision has over optical only with a phosphorus screen 
is the fact that because it's digital, it's much easier to obviously record what you're looking at onto a card. So I wasn't actually expecting this to be able to record. I was thinking, it was, I thought it was going to be view only, obviously to, say, um, to keep the price down. So the fact that the box says that we can actually record, um, I'm presuming images and video, um, is interesting and uh, yeah, good. Um, yeah, capture images, capture videos right there in front of me. So um, that's, again, it's above and beyond what I was expecting initially. So um, a nice surprise there. So some accessories, I'm trying to keep this in focus. So we got the device, we've got a card, it comes with a card, the box, a belt, manual, cable, UV cable, AV cable, so audio, video, a USB cable, and a cleaning cloth. So no batteries are included. Um, what batteries do they use? I'm assuming, ooh, does it say so here? So some specification, oh, there we go. Eight AAA, ba AA batteries. So um, pretty standard, you should be able to pick them up. It's gonna add quite a lot to the weight just for um, those who are interested in stuff like that. Um, yeah, there we go. So that I think the optical zoom is going to be two times and then so digital two threes are six. That doesn't quite make sense. So we're going to have to uh, work that out. Once I've obviously done my research a little bit more, I'll be able to come back to it. quite a high resolution image. That's pretty good. Um, and the objective lens size aperture 31 millimeters. Okay, so I'll, I'll continue on with that once I've taken a look at the product. So let's take a look. Wow, have a look at that. <laughs> now this is genuinely a first time opening of the box. So um, I wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting such a case. Um, I'm, I'm, the, the style's not exactly what appeals to me in the, the, the brownie color, but what I will say is I was not expecting a, it's almost a rigid case. So it's, um, you know, semi-rigid, but um, you, you know, you can't really crush that. So in terms of protection, this is going to offer, a, a, you know, an excellent level of protection to to the night vision device inside. So this is uh, above and beyond what I would expect to see. So we're off to a really good start. Right. Okay. So let's um, open her up and have a take a look at what's inside. Um, there are two zippers, which is good to see as well because it gives you a bit more flexibility. The quality of the zip is pretty good. I mean, it's not as robust as some, but yeah, you look after it. I think you'll be okay. Right, so what do we have inside? Let's have a look which way around should we go? We go this way. So let's start off with the manual. There you go. Um, use a manual. It's, yep, um, it's all in English. So the whole, every page, because sometimes you get a manual and um, it, it seems substantial, but most of it's, it's in like five different languages, so pretty good. Um, it's going to cover setting up all the menus, the usual stuff. Okay, so user manual. Next up, oh, what about you? Okay, so we got a, a next wrap. Um, what I, my initial thought is it's quite generic. Obviously, it's got no branding or anything like that, so it's likely that this um, next trap will be used um, perhaps by a wide variety of different brands and things like that. Um, you know, at this sort of price level, it's sort of to be expected. You're always hoping that they're going to have something that looks, you know, less. But, you know, what I will say on the positive, that's a very minor point, is the fact that it's it's really wide over here. So that's going to be um, distribute the weight a lot more over your shoulders. So it's going to be um, should be comfortable. And the fact that the padding, um, it has a neoprene type of padding. Um, is, is pretty substantial. So this should be fairly comfortable even with quite a heavy device. Um, picking it up, it, it feels fairly lightweight at the moment, but um, I assume that it, it hasn't come with batteries. I don't think it does. Um, so we will see if it does or not. The actual make of the strap itself, the stitching looks decent. Uh, I do like the fact that you can adjust the length of it. These buckles are, are quite substantial and quite heavy. Um, and it's it's all metal. So generally with lower costing devices, you, you tend to get plastic clips and things like that. So this is, is pretty good um, to start off with. It's Everything's metal, so much more robust, but it's, you know, the slight downside is that it's, it's a lot heavier, clunkier. Um, for a night vision device, I like the fact that it's all black. Um, you know, some people do want to remain hidden at night time for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, no comments, please. Uh, <laughs> Um, and then I'm talking about with wildlife, 
uh, so you are not remain um, invisible. Um, so this is quite reflective, but yeah, that's a minor point. If that is an issue for you, get a different strap. Right, so moving on swiftly along. Let's go. We've got some cables. These look like audio video cables um, to go on the side. So you could probably plug it into your computer, I mean your TV or whatever, or, or um, video equipment if you need to, whatever. Most people don't tend to use that. And here we have a USB cable. Uh, and yeah, so it's a pretty standard jack at the end. So I'm not sure what that's called. I um, don't know if you can pick it up on the camera there, but um, it's pretty standard. It looks like pretty much most that go into uh, most cell phones and things like this these days. So that's a, it looks like a standard USB uh, cable, which I'm guessing is going to be used not for charging because um, I don't think it comes with a charger. It's going to be for um, transferring files. So we definitely can record with this device, which I said, as I said in the beginning, it's, it's something I wasn't expecting. What do we have here? Uh, it does look like some sort of, um, so that's going to wind in a bit like a tripod. So I'm assuming this is going to be some sort of um, way to attach it to a, um, a tripod. So some sort of tripod adapter, which is good. It's nice because um, at night time, uh, uh, especially if it's the 10 times magnification, uh, again, any movement, especially if you're recording, if you're recording video or stills, uh, it's got a little bit of a padding under there, so it's quite nice to see. You want whatever you're looking through to be as steady as possible. So that's that's a nice thing to see. I mean, it's not the superest, highest quality thing I've ever come across, but you know they didn't have to include it. Um, that grip was good. So we have a something else I wasn't expecting. Um, a way to attach it to a tripod. Lens cleaning cloth. Um, again, very generic. Let's just have a quick look at the quality of the actual cloth contained within. Things always quite hard to. Okay, so it's it's super super fine um, material um, stitching. So microfiber definitely. Um, yeah, that'll do a more than decent job of of you know lightly brushing your lenses and definitely cleaning the outer side of the of the body. Again, um, as with any optical device, I recommend getting a, a proper lens cleaning uh, kit if you want to thoroughly um, clean lenses without any fear of scratching or marking it and as such. So continuing on with the bag, we'll just go back to, I just want to return to it in that it's a semi-rigid construction, plenty of protection. It also comes with this extra pouch, which as we've already seen because they store everything in it, is, is pretty useful. So nice to see. Right, okay, so let's move on to the main course as it were and take a look at the actual product itself. Okay, so let me go inside. Let's put that away. Okay, so there you go. Well. Well, what I'm going to say first, my initial, it, it the, the it's got a velvety finish to the actual um, outer casing, which which feels really nice and smooth. I don't know if you've ever felt that on on some electronic devices as they they make it sort of feel quite you know it's got a very very fine texture to it, which feels very nice and and feels more expensive in some sort of ways. I don't know if it has any intrinsic advantage to it. I think in some ways, the very, very fine texture could mean that it's less reflective because if you had a, a really hard plastic, obviously more light's gonna reflect off it. So obviously if you wanna remain hidden at nighttime, a less reflective device um, is desirable, but obviously if you wanted to be super unreflective, these wouldn't be silver, um, shiny silver buttons. Um, mentioning that coming, um, having mentioned the buttons, I think the first thing, let's just have a look, zoom, infrared light, so that'd be um, the digital zoom, I imagine, um, the infrared light on and off switch, changing your mode, snap, I'm not too sure yet, and that's obviously the on and off button. The thing to point out here, it has a very um, boxy sort of uh, look to it, um, which kind of reminds me of an old uh, projector that I used to have. Um, but so probably not the most modern looking instrument or um, night vision binoculars I've come across. But having said that, it feels really nice in the hands. It's, it's kind of lightweight. Obviously, again, I assume it doesn't have batteries in. We'll have a look just now. But it, it feels quite lightweight, but not too lightweight. So it, it doesn't feel too cheap and plastically and nasty like really some really cheap devices can. So this it, it's, it's all good. Um, the actual feel in the hands, whilst boxy, it does feel natural, so that's important because, and along with, I do really like these deep, the, the buttons themselves are, are really obvious, uh, and uh, these deep grooves sort of direct your fingers into the right place. Now remember, 
when using an instrument at night time when you often can't see um, to know where the buttons are and be able to feel and find them without having to look is is really important so the design here is excellent in in that regard i think it wouldn't take long to work to remember which one does what and then you'll be able to use them in complete darkness without having to look at the buttons so that's that's a really important thing and something to look out for when choosing night vision devices i've had ones in the past where um, the buttons are small and finicky and it's just that much more challenging to actually use the device you know when you're in darkness and also remember when you're looking um, through a night division device your your eyes are getting a lot of light into them so when you take your eyes out and try and see you actually are blinded it takes a while for your eyes to readapt to the darkness so that's important i keep on referring these are advertised to and I refer to them as being um, night vision binoculars but they aren't actually binoculars in the truest form or um, the way of um, the word in the fact that yes you're going to look through the device with both your eyes onto the screen over here so biocular but they only actually collect light um, through one and I'm assuming this is going to be yes this is going to be the objective lens so so that it collects light through one um, objective lens so um, on this side of the device, it's actually a monocular. So you, um, on this side, of this is going to be the infrared light emitter. And so this, um, this device, um, binocular as it's advertised, only has a monocular on this side. The advantage of a monocular over a binocular in terms of the manufacturer would be the fact that it allows the device to be smaller, even though this isn't a particularly small device. You know, if it had to have another objective lens, um, quite often what they will do is they'll put the IR emitter on the top or something like that. But it, it um, in general, a monocular is more compact than a binocular, but the fact that this has got a screen negates that. But I think more importantly, what a monocular is and is why you generally find cheaper night vision devices or monoculars and not binoculars is that it basically halves the cost because you've got um, half the amount of um, lenses to worry about and, and uh, it's, it's just simpler to make. So monoculars are much cheaper to make than a binocular. But the good thing is, as I said, you look through um, with both your eyes rather than one. So with a monocular, you don't get as an immersive experience having to close one eye and look through. So the fact that this has got a nice screen, you use two eyes, is good. And it's a really is a big screen. So it's going to be interesting to see, and hopefully the image is going to be um, pretty high definition or high quality, and you're going to get an excellent experience from this. It's got this really large um, rubber, um, I was going to say eye cup, but it's more of like a, a face cup. <laughs> Um, that you obviously rest your face against and put your eyes. This is quite good in the fact that it's flexible and soft, not only for comfort, but remember at night time, if there's any um, other light sources, so for example, light coming from your house or a, or a lamp or something, depending on where you are, um, this will block out any light coming from the side and that, which could obviously reflect off the screen. As you can see, this screen is very reflective um, and obviously spoil the view. So that's quite important. Um, so what else can we look at? So as I said, on the front here, we've got the IR um, illuminator here on the left. I think this is going to adjust, adjust the strength of it, I imagine, some sort of focusing. Um, we'll have to find out more on that and get back to you in the full review. But so the IR um, illuminator is good. Again, I wasn't expecting it on a, a cheaper device like this in that it's good because it's, uh, it, it just makes this device more um, function under more conditions. So whilst most good night vision devices will be sensitive enough to work you know in things like moonlight or just with stars depending on the quality an IR illuminator allows any night vision device to work in complete darkness and um, basically because of what it acts like is, is an invisible torch so it's signing out light that reflects off whatever you're looking at and back into the device which is sensitive to infrared and it can pick it up um, as humans, we won't see the infrared light, and I do believe animals can't see it either. So it's an infra it's an invisible um, torch, and but not invisible to the product, which will be able to um, create an image from the reflected light. So as I say, you can work in complete darkness, and so this can be useful on extremely dark nights, or you know if you're working indoors, as it were, um, perhaps um, with no windows or anything. So complete darkness, you you should be able to see with the IR illuminator turned on. Okay, um, the just to quickly talk about the objective lens. Um, 
quite often they'll have some sort of cover. You usually put a, a lens cover over um, the devices that I've seen. But so this one is um, a slightly different design, which is quite nice. I quite like it. This is here for this is for use during the day. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm in saying, in that the um, because this is generally designed to work at night time, and the whatever's collecting the light is going to be super hypersensitive to light. So obviously, if you use it in the day, it's just going to wash out the image. So um, contrary to um, what you commonly want is the most light possible during the day, the it's so sensitive that you need to reduce the amount of light coming into the device um, just so that it doesn't wash out the image. And it's going to have a I think it's going to have some sort of filter on there. It's like a red filter um, just to make sure that they uh, probably blocks out the infrared uh, something to do. I, I don't know 100 percent. But um, anyway, the, the idea of this is it reduces the amount of light that comes into the device just so that you can get an image during the day and it just doesn't wash out and become you know, blanked out, you know, completely white. And then obviously at night time, you'd open it up. Just notice there's a little receptor over there. Oh, that's good. It just locks into place. So at night time, you'd flip this open. And then obviously at night time, you want to collect as much light as possible, um, just so that you do get enough information to create an image. And that's how you would use it at night time. The size of the objective lens, important to just point out, I remember it's 31 millimeters. Um, not massive. So obviously at night you want to get it as large as possible because obviously you want to collect as much light as possible. But obviously a larger lens makes a larger device. It also makes a more expensive device. So not super huge, um, but we will again, please look up for the review coming out in the future and um, that will go over exactly how well they performed. Um, yeah, so all in all, I'm, 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 I'm pleasantly surprised. Let's just quickly look at the, so there's the battery um, compartment and there's one on each side I can see. So it's gonna be four batteries on each side. Double A batteries, so easy to get hold of. I don't actually have any on myself, or I don't have eight. So I can't actually turn it on now, but again, look out for the future video and review. Okay, so this is the port for all the electronics. Audio video jack, um, there's going to be a USB port for transferring files. And obviously this is going to be the memory stick card. And again, low price, I wasn't expecting getting the card, not even not even expecting to get be able to record. So the fact that you also get a 64 gig card is great. So there you have it. Um, my impressions are good, um, definitely above and beyond what I'd expected to see. The overall feel and look is just much better than I'd expected. So I'm going to leave it there. And I'll just say to you that, um, yeah, look out for the full review coming up in the near future. So there you have it. I do hope that this unboxing has been of both use and of interest to you. If it has, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. This is something quite small, but it really does help this channel to continue to grow and thus helps me to continue to bring you more and more content in the future. Other than that, if you have any comments, thoughts, suggestions, either on these um, night vision device or night vision devices and binoculars like these, or indeed anything about optics, binoculars, or um, ideas for future videos or whatever, feel free to use the comment section down below and I'll do my real best to get back to you. you know, I tend to get back to about 99% of people. You know, there's always the 1% that you try and avoid in this world. Um, so apart from that, uh, yeah, um, as I say, feel free to comment below. And then also, as I mentioned in that extremely long and winding introductory portion to this video, which is kind of like going like now the outro is going to be similar. I, sorry, I tend to digress when I haven't got a script in front of me. But what I'm going to say is in the future or over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be staying up late at night or I'm getting up early in the morning to fully test um, this product. Once those tests have been done, I'm going to write my um, honest, as usual, opinion on it and its performance. So the full review will be um, on the BBR website. I'll put a link down below in the, in the um, description part of this video um, to that review when it comes out. And on top of that, I do plan to make a follow up video to this. So having said that, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be great. What would be even better is if you hit that bell button, because then obviously you will get um, notified when that video and indeed any other videos that I make um, come out. Only do that if you want to see videos from me, though, because <laughs> otherwise it could get annoying. So, yeah, having said all that and sorry again for digressing and umming and ahhing, 
But I'm going to leave it there and say thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers for now.